Hardcore Minecraft 100 Days, popularized by Luke the Notable, is one of the funnest and most challenging ways to play Minecraft. If you die once, your entire world and work is gone. Now, let's get into the 100 Days. On day zero, I spawned into the world, and as you do on the first day, I started looking for trees and a place to put my base at. I climbed the surrounding trees to get a better look at my surroundings. I saw mountains and I saw a birch forest both of which were potential candidates for my future base. Upon closer inspection, I personally liked the birch forest more out of the two options, so I made a little path in my mind to head over to the birch forest, and that's what I immediately did. Of course, first I had to take out the tree that dared to injure me. I reached the cliff's edge. I saw a ruined nether portal off to the left, and the birch forest right in front of me. And the quickest way is a straight line of course, so I jumped right into the water. Upon reaching the top of the cliff, I climbed up a tree and then another tree to find a mountain to my left, a dark oak forest to my right, and the perfect home in the middle. I was very, very, very excited about finding this perfect little spot to build my house. I cleared out some trees and then I started clearing out the ground, of course, because I want a house. So that's what I did. I, I started building my house. It's not that complicated. I spent all day cutting down trees, collecting sticks and saplings for later use that I didn't realize it was becoming nighttime. And at nighttime, as you know, mobs come out. Creepers, zombies, skeletons, and even endermen. Everything that could put an end to my life, and that would honestly be really, really bad. I know it's just 10 minutes or so I'd lose, but still, I didn't want to lose those 10 minutes. So I started crafting planks to start building my house as as quickly as I possibly could, I was building, I was building and building and building, hopefully not dying. I built a simple fortification and then put dirt in the windows and the doorway so mobs couldn't get in. Except spiders, because spiders could just climb right over that if they so chose to, which uh, they thankfully did not choose to do. With nothing left to do except wait for the daytime of day one, I decided to make a little mine in my own base for stone, dirt, coal, iron, whatever I could really get my hands on, I would love to get. In the daytime of day one, I saw a skeleton. I'm not sure why I got up close to it, but it certainly shot me, and it scared me a lot. I started farming on day one, since in hardcore Minecraft, if you don't eat, you die. I wanted the loot in the ruined nether portal, so after I got done farming, I ran right over to it. The loot inside was pretty okay. There's two chest plates, a shovel, some obsidian, and a fire charge. The chest plates would certainly help protect me, at least. A little bit. The fire charge, I'm not sure what it would do for me, but I saw some coal over here, and ah, I really like the idea of that. Using the coal as a starter hole, I carved out a little base in the in the hillside. It was a nice little home away from home for the night. It, it kept me very, very safe, albeit a little cold. I started liking the cave hole so much that I started decorating it with furniture. I made a little wooden couch and sat in it like a, the little king I was. I... I was very, very proud of my little wooden couch I made. I made it back and then I made a bed from wool which was very kindly donated to me. Also on day two, while I waited for my glass to smelt, I started cutting down trees. Having my glass finally smelted, I crafted glass pane so I could put windows in so I don't have to look at dirt anymore. Finally, such an achievement for me. Since I was scared of spiders crawling in from above, I put a ceiling on top of my house which would later become a floor, but you'll see that in about a second. I worked throughout the night to put a roof on my house. I started making a really cozy little bedroom, and then I started thinking about dimensions and how I would put a roof on, what kind of stairs I would use. I I was thinking through it all. I, I became a proper architect in that moment. After a night full of hard work, I rested my head on that sweet, sweet bed and woke up on day three. Throughout day three, I mainly worked on my house. I did check on the farm once or twice, nothing grew. I put down some sugar cane, but that's not important. What's important is the cobblestone roof I'm putting on. It looks so nice, right? Right? Say it looks nice. On day four, I just worked on the roof of my house. I, I worked and worked and worked. This was probably the most important project on my mind at the time. I finished putting on the roof for the most part. I noticed there was no slabs to put on the top because I'm out of cobblestone. So what did I do? I went down to the mines. Oh boy. I mined and mined and mined and mined. In fact, I started making a little pattern down there. Why? I'm not entirely sure. All I know is this will become a very important hole later. As was very common on this day, I worked on the roof of my house. 
I, for the most part, would finish it on, on day four here. After finishing my roof, I started to expand the grass outside of my house. I wanted a, a bigger lawn, which would help with future building projects and a wall that I'm about to build. Moving on to day six, I mainly just worked on the farm this, this day. I, I spent a lot of time down here. I cut down trees. I move dirt around as you can see I'm, I'm i'm always working on that dirt man i i i love aesthetic dirt and i love food and you know I'm, I'm i'm a big fan of food on day seven i worked on the little mini farms right outside my home i watered i cropped i planted i i did a whole bunch of stuff it was getting darker on day seven but there's still work to be had i put more dirt in the ground. Uh, it's weird putting dirt with dirt, but you know, you can't you, you, you can't do anything about it. It's Minecraft. It's it's the way it is. As any great Minecraft YouTuber knows, when it's dark out, you should go mining, right? That that's how the thing goes. Anyways, yeah. I on day 7 during the nighttime, I just mined. It would actually turn out pretty helpful later on for walls, for housing. It, it was actually a very productive night. I was so proud of the hole I dug, I had to go back down and look at the hole. I went through one little hole to another hole. Look at that. I, I had so much fun digging that out. I found some coal. That coal honestly felt like diamonds. It was so fun finding it. On the morning of day eight, I started wall construction. That's right. I finally started building a wall. It'd be super, super, super defensive. And I even put in cute little fence gates so I can get in and out. Albeit not that many fence gates. It was only four. One for each direction. So, you know, mobs could only get in in four places. If I were to ever let the gates open accidentally. I worked on the wall for basically all of day eight. Uh, even through the rain, I worked and worked. When I stepped outside, I saw a zombie. He freaked me out a little bit, but I ended up dispatching him. However, since mobs could spawn still inside my wall, which was almost finished as you can see in the background, it was it was almost fully completed, I, I got scared and ran to bed because, you know, monsters can't get me in my bed. On day 9, I heard a skeleton noise and it freaked me out. I didn't see him at first, surprisingly. He was hiding in the trees. He came up close to me and honestly, I was kind of scared. I thought I was going to die right there. I peeked. He was still sitting there. He shot me. I... I, I, I was I was freaking out internally. I did not know what to do. I was getting ready to run away. I started building like I was in Fortnite. And then I'm like, you know, maybe if I start working on the wall, he'll leave me alone. And so that's what I did. I, it worked. I mean, I lived. And that poor chicken is stuck out there with that skeleton. But hey, that chicken is not me. After that skeleton scare, I decided to work on my own little farm. I added a cute little trim to it with birch logs because I have like a gazillion birch logs. Because of all the log cutting I did, you know, I deforested a, a good little bit of this mountain so far. Speaking of logging, I decided to go clean up all the trees around my wall. I, I needed to push out the forest line a little bit so mobs couldn't literally stand right next to my wall and defeat the purpose of the, my wall. I also decided to go and, you know, get rid of all the dirt that was close to my wall so mobs couldn't just walk in and completely ignore my wall. What was the point of a wall if they could just walk right in? There's... There's no point. In the nighttime of day nine, I decided to go light up my wall, its surroundings, and anything that I could reasonably light up. To round out the night of day nine, I did a little bit of farming. I planted down that one little seed I got, and then I was planting out future crops like potatoes, carrots, and beetroot. Ah, lovely beetroot. After that long night, I rested my head lovingly. And then I woke up on day ten. To do... Hmm... To do what? I wasn't quite sure. Dirt! Dirt, 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 dirt! That's what we would be doing on day 10. I was mining up some dirt to put inside of my compound for later, and so mobs couldn't look in as good and shoot me, because that would... <laughs> that'd be really bad for my health. Oh, and there was a zombie or two that might have tried to kill me, but I dispatched them. Oh, and you gotta know, I cut down trees. I cut down so many trees. Oh, and you gotta know, I started placing down dirt. I placed dirt everywhere in my compound. Wherever there was a hole, I placed dirt. Or at least I tried to, I eventually did run out of dirt. In the nighttime of day 10, I wanted to fish, why? I'm not particularly sure, maybe it was the fish, maybe it was some of the cool loot you could find like saddles and name tags and whatever other stuff I wanted from the sea. And I decided to go fish in my little cave shack 
with uh, some added dirt protection too, because, you know, I don't want a creeper creeping up on me. We're back in the mines on day 11, and you gotta know, I want to go in that big cave down there. And that's exactly what I did. I finally found the cave. I mined some iron, blocking my entrance in. And the zombie did not like that at all. He, he did not appreciate me coming into his home like that. I may not have known him at the time, but this cave would prove incredibly important to my future success. There were so many materials. It gave me access to the deep slate levels, like the deep dark, but not like actually a deep dark, but like, you know, the deep slate stuff. It, it was super, super crucial. And it's right under my base, so it's quick and easy access. There were so many resources. It, it was it was the best thing for me early game. Albeit, it was very, very scary because I could have died at any time. You see that lava right there? I could fall in that at any moment. I stayed down in the mines until day 12. I fought mobs, I gathered resources, and then I started making a staircase because of a baby zombie incident, which really, really scared me. And I won't show you because it was very, very traumatic for me. I, I almost died, but I'm not going to show you. It, it was it was very scary. Ugh, fine here. Here are some of the remnants of the baby zombie battle. I started pillaring up. I made I made a whole bunch of different things to try and get away from this thing. It was It was, it was not fun for me. Why am I farming logs out when it's nighttime and raining? I'm not sure, but I know you shouldn't be doing this. This was incredibly dangerous. I didn't have my surroundings lit up at all. A creeper could have creeped up on me and ended this entire playthrough at any time. It was, it was so, so dumb of me to do this. I did cut start construction of this little dirt circle with an oh, infinite water source down in my basement. Its use would be for a little bit later. On day 13, I farmed. I I like wheat a lot. It's it's a good food source. And it's useful for trading later on. Oh, you know I love farming all that sugar cane. It was so much fun destroying them. And I, I would do this for the full 100 days. I, I loved taking all the sugar cane down. I also worked on expanding the roof of my little basement mine thing. I'm, I'm not sure what to call it at this point in my 100 days, but... It was definitely very cramped and I hated smacking my head on the roof every time I jumped up to go up a block. So you know I had to make that thing at least three tall. On day 14, I worked on expanding my little farm. And I worked with laying out my crops where I'd want them, what future crops I'd put them in where. Although I would end up changing this entire thing later on, but at the moment, on day 14, I was still a little confused on what I wanted to do. I also worked on chopping down all the trees around my perimeter, or at least a few of the trees, because skeletons and baddies could still hide inside these trees. On day 15, I worked on clearing the dirt around my walls so nothing could shoot me while I'm inside the walls. After working on clearing the dirt, I decided to go clear up more logs. Why? Because there's a thousand gazillion trees around my base, and trust me, there's gonna always be creepers and zombies and skeletons hiding, but I can push out where they are, so that's why I'm cutting down even more trees. First, I mined the dirt, and now I placed the dirt. Oh boy, day 16, I can't wait to go chop even more logs. I cut logs all day, but you had to know, I always made time to fish. I love fishing in Minecraft. It's so relaxing and fun. Plus, it's a nice way to get XP and... Mm, okay, loot. I actually managed to get a saddle and a name tag that night. The saddle would be useful pretty soon. But the name tag, we will be saving that for a special surprise. Which will come later in the video. I finally gave that little watering hole down in my basement thingy, McDewey, a use. I planted sugar cane down there. And this would actually be pretty helpful later on. Over time, I would accumulate uh, about a, a few stacks worth of sugar cane, which is going to be super useful for villager trades, books. It's, it's a great slow investment. Back down in the mines of Night 17. I sure love resources and stone. I really love stone, apparently. Oh, and slime. I found a slime that night. I never used the slime balls, but... It's good that we have them. On day 18, I emerged victorious from the mines with a decent amount of loot, a lot of iron, and a smidget of gold, but, you know, the iron's the real treasure here. Since I emerged pretty late on day 18, I just ran around the perimeter of my base to see if any mobs would spawn. Since I wanted to fight them just a, a little bit, you know? I, I wanted some loot, I wanted some XP. I also just wanted to see where they would spawn. If they spawn close to my base or out in the trees, later on I would just end up farming throughout the rest of the night. On day 19, I started carving out a little hole in my basement thing. Whatever you want to call it. 
for a future expansion project. That future expansion project would of course be extra storage because you always need extra storage and I especially need extra storage, especially if I want to go through the full 100 days. I need chests upon chests of extra storage. After organizing my storage system, I decided to go cut more trees. Why? Because I can never cut enough trees and I want to expand how far I can see out into the tree line and for future space for future base expansions. I started day 20 off with more cutting trees, but this time in front of my face, facing the ocean, whatever way you want to describe it is however you describe it. I, I, I cut more trees. I, I cut down a lot of trees. On day 20, I started doing more exploring. Well, actually, I started exploring on day 20. I went towards where we spawned to see if there was any cool things right around spawn, and I just wanted to say hi to spawn again. I found a pretty cool ravine, which will come a little bit into play later, Albeit not too much. It is really, really cool to look at, though. I found a village. This village, this one particular village, will come into play so, 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 so much. This village would probably be one of the reasons why I didn't do something stupid and end up dying in my hardcore world. This village is instrumental to my success. I started to lock some of the villagers away, but because the village didn't have a bell for whatever reason, I had to wait until nighttime, so I decided to occupy myself with getting some acacia wood for later, because maybe I would build with it. Although I never ended up building anything with the acacia wood I gathered, it n it's nice to have the saplings for later. With it now being officially night, I could lock away the villagers in their house for safety so I could trade with them later or make villager breeders, or do whatever I really want with them. I fought all throughout the night to protect the villagers as best as I could, save as many as I could. There was one iron golem which was helping me, which mm, he might be the reason I, I didn't die that night too. I fought until the very morning of day 21, where I would then just look over the village, place down some torches, break some uh, of the grass, and then just, you know, take a look around the village. After rescuing the village, I ran home, but I found two horses. A white one, and I think it was another white one, I, I don't remember. I only took one because I found a saddle in the village, and then I became best friends with it, and we rode off back home eventually. It, it was rough. We, we had to go over a river. I made a DIY road over the river because, you know, horses can't swim and let you ride them at the same time. It was... It was, it was okay, but what was rougher was getting through the forest. There, there were so, so, so many trees, and because of this one incident will cause a massive, massive construction project later. I did eventually make it home with my horse. Uh, he, he doesn't have a place to stay, at least at the current moment, but he did manage to brave the forest. On day 22, I started building a pen for my horse because, you know, a king needs his horse, and a horse needs a place to stay, of course. I ended up with this pretty cute design. I needed some fence gates in there, so I took out two fences from each of those corners, and then I would install fence gates, and I'd add some more stuff, but it's actually turning out like a, a pretty nice build. Still working hard on that roof into the night of day 22. I'm almost done. I just have to put up some torches, put up some little cosmetics for my horse, and hey, we'd be, we'll be done. Right away in the morning of day 23, I would start farming. We need more crops. We have a village now. We have a horse. We have a lot of future things to do. We need more food. You've got to know I added a cute little campfire right next to my horse stable. I, I couldn't just leave my horse without, you know, a little bit of company. Down in the mines for this night. I got to keep you on your toes. On the night of day 23, I was just minding my own business in the cave system until all of a sudden, whoa, I found diamonds. I, I was very, very excited. I checked my time. I started freaking out. As you can see, I was very happy. I ended up staying underground the entirety of day 24, and then I would emerge eh, pretty late, and then I'd sleep and wake up on day 25, where I started wall construction of our first ever expansion. Wall construction would go pretty good, except for when I would run into trees or weird terrain. Otherwise, it, it, was, it was a very nice wall to build. I would go on to work on the wall until the nighttime of day 25, where I put in cute fences and little torches to help guide my way in the darkness. On day 26, I started farming. Since all my extra crops I planted don't have full, mmm, 
planters, whatever you want to call the different rows, those aren't fully full yet. So I had to farm and, you know, everything that is full, I should farm and get more of that for extra surplus, for trading, for, for all the fun stuff. After farming, I just worked on clearing the different levels of dirt around my new established wall so nothing could shoot me from inside that. And I would do that the entirety of day 26 and a little bit of the nighttime. On day 27, I traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled. I was exploring. I wanted to find what was past the one village we had found at the current time. So I went through the acacia biome, I would climb hills and whatnot. Eventually, I would find a mangrove swamp, which was pretty cool. It was full of mud and trees. I ended up only grabbing a sapling, though, and no wood, which, eh, that's okay. During the nighttime of day 27, I found a ruined nether portal with, you know, better loot than last time, in my opinion. There was tons of golden carrots. On day 28, it's refurbishing time. Yep, that inventory tells me that I'm working hard. Oh yeah, that's a good looking basement. We're doing great. Okay, now that's a nice basement. Hmm, what if we just start working on the entire basement? Can, can we renovate this entire basement? I think we can. Oh, would you look at that? Everything is starting to look slightly different. Hmm, and we're almost at day 30. Hmm, even more wall construction on day 30. On day 30, I for the most part would have finished my basement. I just had small minor things to add after this. On day 31, I expanded the roof in my little downwards mineshaft thing. I'm, I'm not too sure what to call it. it. It's a tunnel, I can tell you that though. I wanted to go tackle that huge cave down in the basement, so that's exactly what I did. I explored, I lit up, I mined, I, I did a whole bunch of stuff. A little bit later, I would actually go on to find diamonds. I, I found three in this little patch. It, it was quite nice. Eventually, it turned to day 32 down in the caves, and I would stay down here. For a while, I fought creepers, I zombie skeletons, whatever came across my path. I also picked up a lot of resources, which would help us in the future. Whoa, day 33, we're back up on the surface, and we're farming my, my favorite thing. That's literally all I did for day 33, and I smelted the resources and, you know, put that stuff away, but that's not important right now. Day 34, I woke up with one goal in mind to make a road. A road where? A road to the village. So that's exactly what I started to do. I started to clear a pathway to where I wanted to start the road. And then I found where I want to make the road start. It's pretty close to my base. You can see my house right back there. And then you can see where I started to clear some trees for my future road. Oh boy, we are about to cut down so many trees. Chopping trees. Oh, how we love chopping trees on day 35. I got bored of tree cutting, so I decided to make a pathway to the village using torches so I know where to cut all the trees down, and so I don't accidentally go in the wrong direction, because that would be really bad and would waste so much of my time. I ended up deciding that making it to the reverse edge would be far enough for now, because I wanted to make a bridge, and I didn't want to make the bridge and then go find the torches again, so I just decided, just get to the river's edge, we'll make a bridge, and then we'll continue the torch path later. Oh boy, I can't wait to do more tree chopping on day 36. After chopping literally all of day 36, I wanted to break on day 37, at least for a little bit. So I decided to go check out my little wheat farm down, you know, by the ocean, and it was doing amazing so, so, so many crops. Welp, that did not last long. I went right back to tree chopping literally right after that. Do you know what tree chopping does to a man? I'm literally in a tree. And, well, I fell, but ignore that part. Day 38, more trees. That's right, I, I cut down more trees. The, the, the Lorax absolutely hates me. Day 39, more trees. Yep, I'm cutting down even more trees. It's... This is a lot of trees we're cutting. I didn't want to cut down these two massive trees, so I started, you know, making them look a little prettier and not so in the middle of my road. Although, th this second tree here, it took a second to, to make it look better, but trust me, this is actually a pretty spot in the, in the final end of this road. Day 40, I did some landscaping work, you know, I, I wanted to make the road a little easier to build later on, and it would help me actually traverse the road better to cut down the trees later better, if that makes sense. Why am I underground? Why am I mining cobblestone? I, 
Who knows? I know why. It's because I wanted cobblestone to build my bridge. And I also used all the trees I cut down to make the bridge too, because, you know. And birch looks nice. Building the bridge on day 41. Building and building and building. And trust me, more building. Lighting up the bridge on day 42. And now tree cutting, my total favorite activity. And now we start the torch path to the village so we know what key trees to cut down and which trees get to live. I might be the Lorax. I don't know. Shack time during the evening of day 42. I don't want to run back to base anymore. It takes at least like a minute to run back there and I'm not running back there during the night anymore. So I'm gonna make a cute little home right here. Just know this tree had it coming. Just know that. Whoa, on day 44, we started building a bridge. A bridge to where? The village. That's right. I got sick of cutting trees and landscaping and everything. So what did I decide to do? Build a bridge, because that's obviously the, the best thing. And even more work. You know, I spent a lot of time mining this day as well, but that's boring. It's dark. I'd rather show you bridge building than the mining I did. Kept working on the bridge on day 46. It was actually turning out pretty nice. I, I, I like this bridge, even if it's oak. Of course, we need guardrails on the bridge, too. You never know if I'm riding a horse and then I just accidentally fall off. That, that would be quite horrible. Or if I'm also just, you know, a, a little dumb and then fall off the bridge, I'd, I'd rather not have to swim. On day 47, I changed out the bottoms of my water canals to cobblestone because I literally farmed all day and I got sick of look looking at stone and dirt, so I changed it out to cobblestone. Plus, uh, farming's a good way to make money later on, and I gotta eat too. And I love food, I, I might be Queso's cousin or something, you never know. Day 48, I started road construction. I would use birch slabs and stone cobblestone stairs throughout the entire project. Why? Because I have hundreds upon thousands of logs of birch, and I have a basically endless amount of cobblestone that I can use and I can always mine more cobblestone if I were to ever run out which yeah I mean I, I, I will run very 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 low on cobblestone because this road is crazy long oh it's it's almost nighttime already I, I've been working on this road for like what felt like 10 seconds but no as you can see it's it's dusk and I I, I gotta start running home before the, the silly monsters come out and, and hurt me. Oh boy, more road work on day 49. At least this time I have a cool little staircase to show for my efforts. Oh wow, we, we almost made it to the two little cool trees I made earlier. Our, our road's actually coming along pretty far. That's that's awesome. Wow, day 50 already. This this has been a crazy journey, and, and we're only halfway there. I, I, I truly can't believe it. Of course, I kept working on the road on day 50. I've already worked so much, I can't stop now. Day 51, more road work, you, you would have never guessed it. More road work on day 52, because that's the only thing I know how to do. We're getting pretty close to the village now, where I'm installing a cute little guardrail so I don't accidentally fall off into that massive chasm down below. On day 54, the road is very, very nearly complete. In fact, I'm starting work from the village bridge to f connect up to the road. It's actually not that far away. On day 54, the road has finally been completed. I was super duper happy since I this has spent about 20-ish days working on, on this road. And then, uh, you know, 20 days later, you finally finish it. For the most part, I, I, I'd be really excited. Immediately after my celebration, I decided to time how long it would take to run from the village back to my base, or at least where the, the start of the road starts. And in total, that took about 2 minutes and 15 seconds, roughly. I timed it out then, and I just timed it out now in recording, and yeah, it's, it's about the same. On foot, it is roughly 2 and a quarter minutes long. I watched the sun set on day 54, after a long, hard day of road building. Day 55, the first time my horse has ever gotten to ride this road. And where are we going? The village, of course. There's, there's only one destination on this road. At the village, I mainly just messed around with the villagers, trying to, you know, look for at least decent trades. I traded some, and I also worked on sugarcane and some plants and stuff. But day 55 was relatively uneventful. Day 56, on my way back to the village, I decided to plant all the flowers that were in the way of my road around the two little cool pretty trees that I made. And I made them even prettier by putting all the flowers that I, uh, displaced. And then I put them under the trees. You know, it's actually a 
very pretty spot now. Day 56, I started the next great project, and that would be a wall around the village, because I don't want to put investment and time into this village if all the villagers could just die if a random zombie comes in, you know? So, I had to build a wall around it, of course. Day 57, more wall work, where we are making decent progress. We are running pretty low on cobblestone walls, so we will have to go mining pretty soon, but that is no issue. We are playing Minecraft, so you're gonna do mining, and you're gonna do crafting. Oh boy, time to go mining on day 57. We're fully out of walls and cobblestone, so I have to make this tunnel even, even bigger and longer. Leaving the mines on day 58 with a belly full of cobblestone, coal, and even a little bit of copper. And now we're doing wall work because, you know, that's like the only thing I know how to do is, is do lots of manual labor. Okay, back into the mines on day 58. Why? Because we're, we're running pretty low on coal and cobblestone especially. That is our main, main issue here. Day 59, more wall work. That's right. But this time we're super close up on that hill to our right-ish, whatever direction that is is the start of this wall where we're super super duper close oh my goodness the walls are about to touch they are so 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 close just a few blocks and skadoosh the wall is fully connected now all we have to do is light everything up inside maybe destroy some grass along the way and then our villagers will be safe just not safe for me every good ruler needs a house so of course i started to build one this house may not be the prettiest but it, it will it, it will do i ran around lighting up all night i don't want any nasty spawning especially inside of this village which is now under my protection of course day 60 i worked on my house a little more i ran around and farmed and you know just did general stuff to try and pass the time to nighttime because i wanted to you know make sure that nothing can spawn inside me walls but first you know i have to get through the day oh on day 61 i would be appear to be home and i would be working on sugarcane i wonder what you could use sugarcane for in relation to the villagers hmm and now i'm back at main base mining underground for some reason i'm, I'm not entirely sure why i decided to come back and mine now instead of you know, farming and then going to go trade some emeralds for the sugarcane, but okay, I guess I'm mining now. I think I needed iron or something. I'm, I'm not even sure. Toodaloo, normal mining. Oh, 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 oh my god, that's diamonds. That, those are diamonds right there. There was a total of six diamonds in that cluster. I was incredibly happy. In total, I now have 11 diamonds, which, you know, is a, is a very, very nice amount of diamonds to have. Day 62, I decided pumpkins was top priority since, you know, some of the villagers do want pumpkins, you know, like specifically the farmers for trading. So I'm like, let's start early and get a punk pumpkin farm going because I already have a few, but I don't have any plants to actually grow more pumpkins. So, you know, let's start some. Oh no, Arkea is building something again. What is he building? He's, he's got birch, he's got stairs, he's working on the farm. Is he building a second level to the farm? I'm, I'm, I just might be. Who knows? Just so you all know, putting in that water on those slabs was such a pain since, you know, slabbed water doesn't spread as you can see. It's missing two slots right there. So it, it was such a pain because I had to grab the water from below and then bring the water up a level in the two buckets I'm holding and then do that for each and every single slab you see. It, it took way longer than it really should have, but you know, it looks pretty, and that's what matters. On day 63, I started crafting some diamond gear, you know, sword, pickaxe, axe, shovel, the works. Just no armor yet, because, you know, I'm I'm kind of poor. Money, money, money. I made so much money, or at least, you know, a little bit of money, when I brought in the sugar cane and some paper and whatnot down to the cartographer, because I wanted to level him up, since you can get maps from him, like a... Uh, a woodland mansion map or a ocean monument map among like, you know, just like money and some Okay level stuff. It, it's it's nice day 64 I came back and did even more trading with him Albeit I didn't really do much trading with him since I forgot to you know Go grab a compass, but that is something I would work on very shortly after but you know I, I have to take care of the village and try and get more money so that's a bit of a priority first. Since I wanted more money, I decided that desecrating the mm, little sand biomes under the water was the next best option. Since you could take that sand and then smelt it into glass and make glass panes and then sell that to the cartographer and make big, big money. I didn't want to wreck my little appearance right in front of my base, so I, I ran around looking for 
sand in places that I, I wouldn't see right away. On day 65, I raided the village for all of their hay bales they have around. They actually had a lot of hay bales. I ended up taking all that wheat from the hay bales and then selling it back to the villagers. I also worked on my house more this day. I, you know, had time to put in the windows before I sold all the glass panes to the villager. On day 66, I wanted to expand the pumpkin farm, and that's exactly what I did. I wanted to expand my pumpkin farm because some of the farmer villagers in the village will trade pumpkins for emeralds. Six pumpkins equals one emerald. And if I have, what is this, 28 different pumpkin seeds working together, that's a lot of pumpkins, and that means a lot of emeralds. On day 67, I finally came prepared with a compass to buy the Ocean Explorer's map. And then I wanted to check out what he sold next. And dare I say, I saw another map, and it would be a Woodland Explorer's map. Which I obviously didn't bring a second compass for, because I didn't think there would be another map. But now, I know, to come back another time with another compass for another map. I got one of the farmer villagers to expert level and they would trade me whole cakes. Of course, the cost an emerald, but that's actually an amazing price if you think about it. In Minecraft economic terms, that is an amazing price. And of course, he'd later become master right after I bought a gazillion cakes from him and he'd offer me golden carrots and glycerin mandolins and some special stew which I will not be eating. On day 68, I started by gathering sugar cane. As you notice, there's a little diamond pickaxe down in my inventory. I wonder what's up with that. Oh, I know. It's because I'm going to be gathering this little obsidian block that I made from the random lava source I was sitting right there. I'm not sure why it was there, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing something. Archaea is planning. Yep, that's right. Archaea made an enchanting table. And I bet he has a couple books stored right next to the enchanting table. I, I wonder what he's about to do. Oh, no, no. I'm grabbing the clock and I'm going in the basement. What does that mean I'm about to do? Day 69, I finished laying down the floor in my brand new room I was building for that enchanting table and the bookshelves. But I would need more leather, so I went out to gather said leather. On day 70, I placed down the enchanting table, the bookshelves, and, you know, that's all there's really to place for an enchanting table setup. You could put, you know, cute stuff in there, but I didn't have cute stuff. But I did have, you know, nine bookshelves, which obviously wouldn't be enough to get me to the enchanting levels I want, which are level 30 enchants, you know, for the highest level stuff. And there, that stuff just isn't available from nine books shelves, sadly. Oh no, I just finished building the enchanting room. What could I possibly be carving out this time? On day 71, I had finished my brand new room. For the most part, there was still some things I wanted to, you know, suss out and see if they looked nice or if I even truly really cared about certain things. But for the most part, this room would be finished and, you know, its use will be for later on. You'll just have to watch the rest of the video to find out. Since I was in a, you know, a decorative mood from, you know, just carving out a massive hole in my basement, I wanted to decorate my house a little more with, you know, some flower pots, although they're not the absolute best thing in the world, but I feel that they add a nice depth to my house, and when I put flowers up there, it'll be cute. Day 72, back down in the mines looking for diamonds. It's actually something I really, really wanted at the time. I was very, very diamond hungry since, you know, I only had like one or two diamonds to my name. I was poor. I was maybe even poorer than the villagers. I did some beautiful trading on day 73. I got a woodland explorer map. I'm sure that will totally be useful later. And, you know, I, I just made other methods of... Uh, income that day too. On day 74, I brought in that dog that I tamed back, you know, at the start of the series when I was by the village. I, I finally decided to bring that buddy inside. And where would he be going? Well, he'd be going to my basement, of course, because there's, that's the only real place he could be sitting. I was wondering where I, I would end up putting him. He came down pretty easy, thank goodness. But I decided that he would probably have a, a fun time sitting on the little bench, couch, thing I made, you know, sitting right in front of the sugarcane plot, and I figured that'd be a nice spot to put that little guy. He, he could watch the sugarcane for me. To round out the day on day 74, I decided to fix up that, you know, ruined nether portal down by my little cave base I made when I wanted to go fishing. Why? Well, you know, the <laughs> ruined nether portal is a portal, and I just so happen to have the perfect amount of obsidian at that portal to fix the portal. Of course, uh, 
we won't go in the nether right away because that is very, very, very scary stuff. Day 75. We start off strong by going to the nether. I light it with the fire charge we found in that very portal's little chest. And I cautiously sat there. I knew that the nether is the most dangerous place we will probably go in these 100 days. So I was incredibly, incredibly tense going into the nether. And spawning in the nether, we spawned in a pretty scary place where we spawned on a ledge. And if I even fall over that ledge once, it's, it's over. The 75 days I've spent would instantly be over. And honestly, that scared me a lot because I've spent a lot of time and I've fallen in love with this world. And I, I didn't want to die. So obviously I would start to, you know, Alex-proof my entire little portal before I accidentally do something stupid. Day 76. I came back home with not too much stuff in way of loot stuff. I, I got a little bit of the wood types from the nether and some quartz and, you know, not really much else. Because, you know, nether is scary and I'm still in iron armor. So I decided to just grab, just grab a few things and I'd run back home. And that's exactly what I did. It turned out well and we'll probably visit the nether again in... 200 days if I can make it to 100 days first, of course. For some reason, I wanted more land. So, of course, I started building a wall on day 76 of all days. I, I, I'm not sure why, but, you know, more land, more builds, more farms. There's a lot of potential in this amount of land that I'm going to be taking. This is going to be a massive section of wall when it's finally done. So it's, it's going to be pretty worth it, actually. Day 77, more wall work. We're making pretty good progress on this day. A lot of tree cutting. A lot of wall place and, and some mining, you know. We, we had to throw mining in there, too. Day 78, chopping trees. My favorite activity. I've done it for all 100 days. And wall building. You you could never forget about wall building. If I cut trees, you better believe I'm placing walls. Started day 79 off with a lot of tree clearing. And I do mean a lot. This is a really, really thick forest. And I also did some wall placing, too. In the nighttime of day 79, I finished out the wall. Thankfully. And then, you know, throughout the rest of the night, I would go on to light up my new territory. I have a lot, and I mean a lot, of territory to cover. So, I'm gonna be spending a good few nights doing this, you know, just slowly adding torches while I can. In the daytime of day 80, I worked on, you know, adding torches, adding fence gates, cleaning up some of my property, you know, where there might be weird to try and get in and out of the gates. I, I worked on that for the most part. It was... It was not that bad, actually. It didn't take very long, except for certain spots, of course. Day 81, I started getting to know the pumpkins really, really well. Of course, you know, I like money, at least in Minecraft. Emeralds are pretty and shiny, and they can be used to trade for all sorts of useful items. And pumpkins, you know, pumpkin pie, although some villagers will just, you know, trade it to us, but eh, minor detail. I would stand up here for... Almost exactly 10 minutes, like, it, it was really, really surprising. I would come back in the night time, and then, you know, just, like, get confused and be amazed I was still alive. This was a very dumb and risky decision that I did. Since this untamed cave is on my property in my walled-in section, I wanted to at least light this thing up so mobs wouldn't be able to sneak up from down there and potentially kill me. If I'm, like, AFK at a farm or something in the future, I, I, I don't even want the possibility of it happening. Even if it's, like, a 0.2% chance, I'm not taking any risks. I'm getting down there. I'm lighting it up. As you can tell, I lived. And now it's lit up down there, so it's pretty safe for the most part. Oh, no. I'm sitting here again on day 82. This time, I have a clock in my hand, though, so that's handy. I would spend about 10 minutes sitting there, which is weird because I've done that for almost two days in a row. At least it gave... Uh, in total, 20 minutes for my crops to grow, which is pretty good because then you can use those resources to trade stuff for villagers later. But either way, I decided to go take a little bit of a nap, at least as much as a nap as I could get until I awoke on day 83. Day 83 would really kick off with a ton of exploration. I was getting bored and I didn't know what to do and I didn't want to do something too dumb, so deciding to go explore that rift forest that was, you know, pretty close to my home seemed like a pretty good idea, because, you know, it's a mountain, there's some cool things up there, and just going to the dark oak forest is, is nice, because I've never been in this direction, I've been around in some other directions, at least a little bit, especially down towards the village, but never up into the mountains or anywhere in this general direction, really. I cranked the winter distance up to 32 chunks, I saw lots of rolling 
forests and a cute little pond down there which maybe we could build something cool at later. But for the most part, it was nothing new. More mountains, more trees, more forests. But, you know, I saw some stuff that we would probably want to go to later on. Panning over, you could see my home right there. It's really cool just being able to see it from this distance. And of course, turning this way, we can see that there's an ocean beyond the roofed forest. And it, I decided that going that direction would be the best, for at least for now. Going across the ocean and then going up a hill, I found a abandoned village, which means all the normal villagers have been replaced with their zombie counterparts. So you could save the village and, you know, turn them back into villagers. But we sadly don't have the resources or time, frankly, to do that at this point. But we will hopefully come back and at least save the one villager that I did find. Day 84, I climbed a mountain again, and I was exploring. I, I turned my chunks up to 32. I looked around, and then I saw it. I saw a woodland mansion in the last place I expected to find one on another random mountain that looks like the most evil woodland mansion I've ever seen look at it it's on a whole plateau in a massive roofed forest we will 100% come back and fight this again like like this is such an amazing spot I would love to turn this into my house one day but we're on day 84 already and frankly we don't have enough time or gear to take that whole place down and live I mean we could probably try but We'd probably die, and I don't want to waste 84 days, so we'll we'll come back for that later. So, since there is a massive enemy base right there, I decided to make a cute little dirt house. It was originally a plank house, but I'm like, you know, that's really out in the open. And we're going to pretend that the pillagers, which are the things inside the Bundle Mansion, can see out here. So we're going to cover it up with dirt. You know, I was just adding a little bit of lore, and I was just having a bit of fun with... <laughs> with the game. It's literally a video game and I was just having fun. Okay guys, it's it's not that deep or complicated. I've got a pretty full inventory on day 85, so I decided to go home. But along the way I found a cool emerald in the in the mountains, which honestly that made my day. I was I was super ha happy about finding that emerald. All I wanted on day 86 were diamonds. So I was down in those mines. I was hunting for diamonds. And trust me, I I came prepared. I had the clock. I had a pickaxe, I had everything I could possibly need, you know, to find diamonds, because I'm, I'm poor, and we are 86 days in, and I, I wanted more stuff so I could feel better about myself. And, you know, diamonds are useful or something, I don't know. In the nighttime of day 86, I found a diamond, and I was incredibly happy. I was so happy, I breakdanced for quite some time. I, I checked the date, I, I did everything, so I mined the diamond. And there were more diamonds. There was, ah, like five or six diamonds in this cluster. It was beautiful. You won't believe what happened on day 87. I found more diamonds, and I was even more excited. Day 88. I'm out exploring again. Why? Because I want to explore, and I sadly didn't have any bones for this dog or its friend. But I, I, I gave it some beef, you know, just as a... Good gesture. I found a village. And you know what you do when you find villages? You steal certain things. I didn't take everything. I just took a book and some apples because books are useful for enchanting and apples are great for uh, golden apples. Not enchanted golden apples, but just golden apples. Also, as you saw, yes, I did find some bones. And yes, I found another wolf. So that's where that guy came from. I found some goats on day 89 on top of a mountain. They, uh... They didn't really do much. I wanted them to charge into the wood blocks to drop their horns, because you can play music with their horns. But they, they didn't really do much. Also, this mountain's like super close to base. You could see these mountains from base. It's, you know, where those birch trees are. It's literally right there. There was a village that close, because the village is on the other side of that mountain. There was a village that close this whole time. Although I'm happy I didn't actually uh, build a road through this mm, icy terrain, because it would have been a massive pain to make the road here it, it, it it's it's a good thing we didn't come this way late into day 89 i started to gather villager occupation blocks so we can you know actually give more of the villagers in our village a use since there's a ton of them that don't have a job and i want them to have a job so i'm starting to collect some of those blocks we'll we'll enact this plan throughout the next few days day 90 i brought all the job occupation blocks to the village because i want them to have jobs i don't want them to be little not useless villagers to me. I mean, I could make them give me babies, but honestly, that's kind of not useful if they don't work for me. So I did a lot of trading and I gave them all jobs, or at least I tried to. Day 91, I worked on giving even more villagers jobs. I just got done working with a loom smith 
or whatever you call them. Of course, some villagers didn't want to work, and they blocked me from entering their homes, but, you know, that is whatever. Eventually, they give in, and they will get a job. Since villages are the only place where cats spawn, I obviously would try to tame a cat with some of the fish that I f have been fishing with. You know, I brought it over, because I'm like, you know, if I spot a cat, I'm going to try and tame it. And this orange one, it, it just kept running away. It, it, it was not cooperating with me. Additionally, on day 91, I wanted to get a mending book trader librarian, and after several minutes of repeatedly giving him a job and then taking it away when he didn't give me what I want, I got a mending book villager. And as you can tell, I was very excited. I, I was I was giving this man all the head nods. Day 92, I found another cat. As you can see, I am chasing this little fellow around. He didn't want to get too close to me, but you know, I had fish, so I would try again. This is my second cat attempt at taming the one, and it was it was okay. We played a lot of hide and seek. Oh, and then it came closer to me, and and I tamed it. I tamed a cat. I was super super duper excited, as you can tell from my uh, sudden breakdown and my repeated jumping. I now have a cute cat, and just my luck. Right before I leave the village to go work on the last massive project, I found another cat. That's right. And I saw this cat. I'm like, okay, I just tamed one. I can tame this one too. So this one I would stalk around my entire village. You see the, my house back there? I would chase this thing way past my house to those villager houses. It was a long, long chase. Amazingly, after that long chase, I cornered it and fed it a singular fish and tamed it. I don't know what I'll name this cat, but... But there's plans in the works for some of my animals. On day 93, I tried to herd cats. Do not try to herd cats. It is genuinely one of the hardest things I've had to do in Minecraft up to this point. And, apparently, they can climb ladders. I did not they can, know they can climb ladders. Albeit, climbing down the ladders, as you can see with these two cats, they apparently can float and climb down ladders. It was actually pretty cute to watch them go down the ladder though. Day 94. I figured today was as good as day as any to finally plant some flowers up on my little balcony things that I made. I collected these flowers back when I adventured a good few days ago when, you know, when I found the Woodland Mansion. That's where these flowers came from. So these flowers aren't only beautiful, they also hold, you know, some significance from ex exploration and the such. To get ideas for what to do for the remaining five days left, well, technically six, but you know, five days after this day, I fished and fished and even fished into the night. And I did come up with an idea. Day 95. I was looking for a spot on my compound to build this new structure. And I found a spot. It would be in the previous corner. And I broke ground on this new construction. As you can see, there's hoppers and a double chest. I wonder if you can piece together what this new building is. And now I'm towering up about 20 something blocks. I think it's 23 or 24. It ends up being at least in height. Oh, can you piece it together? I bet you can, little Timmy. You are very, very smart. That's right, little Timmy. I am building a mob farm. A mob grinder, mob spawner, whatever you want to call it. I am building a big floating structure where enemies will spawn, it's fully intentional, and then they will fall down that chute in the middle, thanks to some water, which you'll find later, and then you get the items from them. You won't get XP unless you directly kill them, of course, but, you know, I just want some extra items. I, I don't need tons of XP right now. I just want some extra items. That's all. Day 96, I would do more work on the mob farm. I mainly counted out, you know, make sure the water would actually flow to the center to push the mobs in. And then later on, I would go and do some, you know, boring stuff that I don't really need to show you. I would then work throughout the night. And as you can see in the my hotbar down below, you can see I have some carpets. That's what I did. That was the boring stuff that I cut out for you. Yep. I, I hunted a lot of sheep down for their wool. I, I feel really bad about it. It took me all over my world. In the daytime of day 97, I would actually end up finishing the mob farm, at least for this level, because mob farms are technically infinitely expandable up to the world limits, the height limit, 326 or whatever. But for now, one layer is probably enough, especially because there's definitely tons of caves below me that I can't light up. 
So there's no need to make 10,000 stories. One story is enough to just have a passive income of mob drops, and that's perfectly fine with me, especially considering there is less than three days left in this video. I, I didn't need to go absolutely insane with my stuff. Even just waiting the small amount of time between when I finished building it to when it was actually completed, as you saw for a split second, because I literally opened up for like not even half a second, so I'm sorry guys, but yeah, it was a little bit of drops, like that was just a few minutes and it was nighttime, so the mob spawning would be horrible. And even through all those, it was still producing, which was absolutely fantastic. It made me very happy. So on day 98, in order to help my future self, I would go on to light up a whole bunch of my surroundings, or at least attempt to. It was mildly successful. I, I wanted to put out the torches because at nighttime, Mobs could spawn anywhere where it's dark, and at nighttime, the entire surroundings are dark. Not just the mob farm, which is dark right now, so there's going to be tons up there and down in the caves, which are slowly getting lit up, but I want my surroundings lit up for when it's actually nighttime, so they focus more on my mob farm so I can, you know, just get more resources if, if at all possible. During the nighttime, I wanted to build a little, uh, AFK box? I think that's the correct word. For my mob farm, you usually want them at least like five blocks above or below? I forget which it is, but I think it's five blocks above the mob farm because, you know, I'm building it on top of it. Anyways, you, you want it there because that's apparently a sweet spot to make the mobs spawn more inside of your mob farm. So that's exactly what I did. I built a little AFK box up there and I, I think it boosted the rates a little bit. We'll have to play around with this more in 200 days if I can survive the next two days, of course. On day 99, I watched the sunrise. And during that time, the past 98 days flashed through my eyes. I've spent, at this point, 24-ish hours in this world, and it all just flashed in my eyes at the moment. Anyways, we still have important business to do. I decided to go check the mob farm to see what kind of loot I got, and it's kind of... Not good for having been built for at least like 20 minutes now, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. It's not very good. And and in hindsight, kind of makes sense because we are literally on top of a massive chasm below our base, you know, because there's tons of holes and massive ravines under here. So the rates are going to be bad for a while until we light up all the surroundings down there. But still, good, good progress to help pass the time. I would go on to decorate my basement and my house and, you know, just all over the place. I, I decorated. In the basement, I started with two flower pots of two saplings. The trees represent how much they've aided me. Oaks might not have been as abundant, but they were all across the journey of making my road. And then the birch sapling represents my start, my home. I literally have everything I have because of birch trees. I would then move upstairs where I built these two little nightstands, which I would then put flower pots on top of, you know, because I want my bedroom to be a little cuter. I watched the sunrise on day 100. Today is the day. Today's the special day. The 100th day. I've lived 100 days, but can I survive until tonight? Well, I'm pretty sure we can. To start off the 100 day celebration, I would like to name one of my cats Milo, after a very, very special but chonky boy in real life, and that would be this guy. I view Milo as a wizard, he likely casts spells at me all the time in real life, so I decided to name him Milo, and the one sitting right next to my enchanted table at that. I decided to take my horse to the village, I wanted to spend a little time with my horse and to go see the village, since that is something we did work on and I wanted to say hi not only to these special trees right here but to the villagers they they'd helped shape uh parts of me but they will serve bigger important roles in the future i i'm 100 percent positive of that i also decide that it is time to finally enchant some of my diamond gear i decided before it got too dark that i would sit by the campfire cook some food and just watch the sun set it's day 100, specifically the nighttime of day 100. So I would like to honor this long, momentous journey with an emerald block with a cute little cake placed on top. And of course, I would prefer to have a munch of a cookie, but this time I think I'll sneak a piece of the cake. Maybe during 200 days, I'll have 
a nice piece of cookie. After an incredibly long journey, at this point 25 hours long, I think a sleep is very well deserved on the night of day 100. And as you can see, it is now day 101. Thank you so much for watching this 100 days video. I know there's a lot of options out there. It's a super saturated content pool, but I sincerely thank you for choosing to watch my entire Let's Play. It's it's honestly been super fun. It's been some of the most fun I've ever, 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 ever had in Minecraft. I've truly enjoyed these 100, maybe 101 days of Minecraft. I've, I've had so much fun recording it. And if you guys want me to do 200 days, let me know down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe, recommend me to your friends. Just let me know in some way that you want me to do this again. I'm, I am more than happy to do this again. I could totally do 200, 300 or more days. I... I love Minecraft, and honestly, I could, I could keep doing this if, if you guys would like. Until then, my friends, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed.